I want to show you how a siphon works. We're gonna get water from here into there for essentially free, not completely, but mostly. So let me go ahead and get it started. This is something that you can do on your own. It's kind of fun. So you need a glass of water uh, and then you need some type of rigid tube. Um, it could be a, a, a plastic tube. Those work really well. I like this bendy straw because you may be able to find one of these. And what you want to do is to have the end point, the out point of the straw lower than the water level here. And now I need to get the water, if I put this like this, it's not gonna work. I need to get that water over the hump. Once I do, it will keep draining until water gets uh, below the input level. So there's a couple ways you could do that. You could suck on the straw. I'm not gonna do that because it has dye in there. I just don't wanna do that. Um, and there's a couple ways you can kind of self-start a siphon, but this is the easiest way. So if I take this and move it under water, and now I hold my finger over the end of this, I'm trapping air in there. So when I lift it up, more air can't get in, and you'll notice that the water level stays constant. You see the water level in the straw? I'm sure you've done that before. And then when I let go and I let air in, then it falls out. So at that point, the, uh, the pressure pushing up the straw from the atmosphere is actually greater than the pressure inside, and that's why it stays. But we can use that to get the water over the loop there, over the hump. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna move it over here, and then I messed up. Let's try it again. So I'm gonna hold it right there. I'm gonna put it down lower. Hold it right there, and there you go. Oops, I'm not very good at this. Let's try, let's try doing it this way. That way we can drain more. Let's see if we can get that to work. I don't think that I can because I need to cut that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that straw. I mean, what does it matter, right? If I take longer than a minute, this isn't a YouTube short. Cut the straw just a little bit. There. Now I can get it down in there really deep. And I can, I wanna get it over that bend. I'm gonna hold this tight, pull it over. Oh, I'm gonna spill everything. Nope. Come on. Okay, I can do it. I know I can do this. Okay, last try. Now I'm gonna do it this time. Nope, that didn't do it. Last try. Push hard. There we go. Look at that. So it's draining for free, but let's let it run because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna overfill this cup um, and that was a bad choice. But once this water level gets below the input, it will stop siphoning. So how does this work? I'm gonna let that go up like that. How does this work? Well, imagine that I have water in this part of the straw and it falls out and there's water in the rest of the part. Well, if it falls out, just like holding my thumb on there, there's gonna be a region of lower pressure. So that means that the pressure pushing down here from the atmosphere and through the water is gonna be greater than the pressure pushing up. So that next water up is gonna fall and that's gonna cause a lower pressure and so forth and so forth and so forth. And then there you go, there you have the siphon. So a couple things that you need to make this work. You need to have a rigid, if this completely is flexible, then it will just collapse under the pressure and it won't work. So it needs to be rigid-ish. Number two, you need the end point, the output point of the water to be lower, uh, right here, the out point, lower than the water level here. You can't pump water higher with this. It doesn't work. It has to be lower. Um, and then the, in, the input tube has to be underwater. I think that makes sense. So that's a siphon, super easy to do. You should try one. Um, very useful in a lot of situations. But the key thing here is, this is a way to get water from one level to a lower level. It has to be to a lower level. You cannot use a siphon to get it to a higher level.